You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. Before we dive into this powerful episode, please remember to subscribe to our channels and give us a five-star rating on iTunes to continue hustling. This episode is sponsored by Imaging Services, Cairo Health USA, Cairo Moguls, Chiropractic Rocks, True Weight Solutions, The 100 Year Lifestyle, Pure Cairo Notes, Titronics, Passive Practice Profits, Brain Tap Technology, Sherman College of Chiropractic, SCED, Cairo Pro Accounting, A-Line, and Midwest Brain Health Technology. Let's hustle. Hey guys, welcome to episode 261 of the Cairo Hustle podcast. I am your co-host, Luke Millette, and here's your host, Jim Chester. So today we had the opportunity of interviewing Dr. Nathan Brown. And if you want to know about relationship adjusting, getting one person to tell two to 200 people that is a referral source, stay tuned. All right, welcome to another episode of the Cairo Hustle podcast. This is episode 261 with our good friend here, Dr. Nathan Brown. And what city are you coming in from today? Uh, right outside of Atlanta, Georgia. Pleasure to be here, guys. Oh, thanks. It's uh, it's really nice to host you today. Um, I think some of the better stuff that we would ever probably talk about just hit the cutting room floor before this interview started. So um, those of you that are on now, be uh, very prepared to get a great dose of chiropractic conversation and great content. Um, we've been curating a lot of stuff uh, behind the scenes today, just talking about uh, some new launch strategies and things like that. But uh, we're really excited to have uh, Dr. Nathan here with us today. And Luke, where are we coming in from today? Grand Junction, Colorado. Awesome. So we should be actually called the Sunshine State because we actually get more sunshine uh, per year than both California and Florida. So, and we have no humidity. So, anyways, <laughs> um, but Dr. Nathan, uh, coming on to our show, Cairo Hustle, there's uh, a big chiropractic conversation, but it starts with you. And the, the conversation starts with your chiropractic story. So if you could tell us your chiropractic story and what got you into becoming a chiropractor, I'm sure our audience is uh, on the edge of their seats to hear this one. <laughs> well, again, uh, guys, thank you for having me. My chiropractic story, um, somewhat unconventional, I think. Um, I didn't grow up in a very holistic household whatsoever. As a matter of fact, um, it wasn't holistic at all. Uh, my uh, I pretty much grew up on Diet Coke and uh, Fruit Loops. My parents had no idea what natural healing was or anything of that nature. So for me, uh, it was later in life that I recognized what chiropractic was. I was living in Seattle, Washington in a high-rise building, and uh, my next-door neighbor uh, was a chiropractor, and that was my first real exposure to chiropractic, Dr. Jason Lyles, uh, when he practiced in Seattle, Washington. So I got to know him. Um, I loved him. A great guy, great doc. He told me a lot about chiropractic uh, and really gave me the motivation. He was like, man, and I was in my early 20s at the time. And he was like, you know, if you want to go back to school and really do something, you know, for yourself that you could have forever, you'd be an amazing healer because I had such a great way with people and love, you know, good, strong relationships. So, uh, you know, I wasn't always the best student and, you know, make no mistake, uh, chiropractic, uh, biology, anatomy wasn't anything I was familiar with. But uh, I took the plunge. I left Seattle. I actually moved uh, down here to Atlanta, went uh, went to school. And uh, here we are, you know, graduated in 2008, 13 years later. I'm still in Atlanta. Uh, and I love this profession. I love practicing and, you know, love love my patients and everybody I come in touch with. So it's been a long journey for me, but one that has been, you know, uh, well received and, you know, a lot of fun along the way. And what would you say are some things that make you unique or stand out from other chiropractors? Well, uh, for me, you know, right now, the way that I practice and the way that I've practiced throughout my career, you know, uh, I'm a very proud to be in zone school, a, a zone doc. And, uh, you know, that, uh, really has opened and blown my mind when it comes down to what chiropractic can really do. Uh, the first 10 years or so of practice, I did a lot of musculoskeletal stuff, a lot of disc work, stuff of that nature, spinal decompression. Um, I've worked with MDs uh, and nurse practitioners, physical therapists with all sorts of different things. So I've got a very good, keen background now of uh, you know all, all the different things that go on in 
you know, medicine, so to speak, uh, and holistic medicine, but chiropractic and what I'm doing now, um, you know, which is the zone technique and being able to help people through that technique, uh, achieve things that, you know, um, people wouldn't necessarily associate chiropractic with, or, you know, what I associate as to be real chiropractic, uh, you know, over and above neck and back pain and headaches and stuff. So, uh, I think that makes me pretty unique, uh, at least in my area. Um, I've got uh, a lot of folks, not a lot, but there are a lot of uh, chiropractors in this city or this region here that are in zone school as well. And we do great work. I'm very proud of it. And that's the cool thing is when people listen to this, they're going to realize why you do what you do and what you're passionate about and how you've uh, matured in your process of being a chiropractor. And I think that that's something that a lot of people should lean on when they listen to the Cairo Hustle podcast is they can learn through the journey of a career where somebody is in a snapshot of today. And they can start to understand that it is typically never easy to understand the chiropractic like schooling and then to go out there and to like figure out like the, the, the right path to be on through your career. Um, maturity happens with practice. And I think that that's what you're saying is the zone school is something that gets people in and they start to build more certainty in their understanding of what a straight chiropractic adjustment is and how to um, determine where to adjust. And I think that those are a couple uh, things that most people have, even in the more seasoned practitioners, where do I adjust? How often do I adjust? How do I uh, detect and correct vertebral subluxation? And they're always thinking about how can they be the chiropractor, but they're not thinking about how to become the adjuster. And I think that that's what zone does is it teaches people how to go back to DD Palmer's work and understand that they are the chiropractic adjuster. No, uh, well, yes, I think that's very well said. Um, and I also feel too, is, is that in our profession, I mean, you know, nobody really agrees on things. It's very difficult. Uh, subluxation, finding subluxation. I mean, if I had, you know, 10, you know, 10 docs in one patient and we all said, okay, go in one at a time and find the subluxation or what you're <laughs> going to do. I mean, we would definitely get 10 different answers. I mean, there's no doubt about it. It's very subjective. It's something that everybody argues about. And it's really silly because you know what, at the end of the day, what is most important is results. Is, and, and that's it. Getting good results, making the patient happy, uh, being a good person, being able to relate to them, being efficient in what you're doing, understanding it, and being very confident in that. And uh, yeah, I mean, this profession has a long way to go when it comes down to it from that aspect. But um, the zone technique really helps with a, it's a, a wonderful roadmap for an analysis, a reproducible analysis, which is one of the things that I value. Um, and again, how you're adjusting, how you're doing things again, the zone techniques, a spinal cord stimulation technique. So you can do things however you want to do in stimulating the cord, whether it's with an activator or, you know, with your hands, like pressure drops or, you know, regular full spine style adjusting, which that is what people, when they come to you and you have a rapport and a relationship with them, that's, what's important is when you're putting your hands on them, how are they feeling that comfort level? Um, and that is, that is something that, you know, bringing something in and, and, and looking at it like this. Cause again, I practiced for 10 years before I started, uh, you know, learning this stuff. And, you know, that's, it's a big, you know, big uh, change in your life and in your practice. But when you understand it, you see it and you realize that it's a very, very wonderful thing to be able to pepper in and you don't have to change anything necessarily. You're just, you know, making more sense of what is going on and helping people in ways that they, you know, really didn't think you could help them or hadn't been helped before in this manner, which is incredible. Great stuff, brother. So what are some mantras that you live your life by, or maybe what are some of your favorite inspirational quotes that keep you fired up? Well, professionally, um, results, I'm very results driven results, results, results. That's what I hammer into my head. I want to treat people the way that I want to be treated. You know, I don't go out to dinner and leave restaurants hungry. I leave full. So, you know, when people come to see me, I want to make sure I'm making a difference and, uh, doing what, you know, helping them achieve what they're there for. 
Uh, I think it's very important. I, I mean, I think moderation is also very important in life. Is is that you know you have to do a little bit of everything. Chiropractic is you know very near and dear to me. It's very important to me, um, but I can't expect everybody to have that same passion. So you know we have to educate and understand what else is going on in life. What are the other things that you can do? Uh, you know to create longevity, a healthier lifestyle, a happier person, and really you know not getting stuck in polarities. I, I feel as though that you know. Uh, when it comes down to health and, and well-being, emotions play such a huge role and they manifest physically. And when you can you know, break through that and figure out what is going on with somebody on a deeper level, it is the pathway to greatness and finding these great results and helping people get to the finish line quicker and really you know, having these things dissolve. Because I don't like managing things and I like fixing things. And I know that's kind of taboo in this profession, but at the end of the day, that's what people come to me for. That's what they. That's what they. You know. That's that's what they want. They want results. They want to get better. They don't want that migraine every week, or they don't even want it every year. They want it done with. So we want to do our best to you know put our you know best foot forward to get those results and make that happen. And that's you know that's how I look at things. Yeah, I think it's very smart, um, result oriented. Um, I think people want to win with their health long term. And I think that people don't want to be managed like used to be when I was a kid, you know, I would hear people like talk about like their old man, their dad, they had to actually go to the doctor. And like, I would hear about other people like saying, yeah, my dad won't go to the doctor, but I think the guard has changed. Now everybody thinks they're sick. Number one. Um, but I think that the, the mindset has shifted as to people do want to be a bit more proactive and they don't want to go to a doctor. It doesn't matter if they're a chiropractor or if they're an MD or if they're a PT. People don't typically want to go to the doctor. Um, so if you can build a good rapport with them and you get them results, that's when you start to understand what marketing is. And marketing is uh, third-party validation. It's people that say, you know what? Dr. Nathan was awesome. Um, he got me in. He didn't try to sell me the farm. He just started adjusting me. He got me some relief. And you should go see him. And I think that that's what we have to go back to is like old storefront style communication is um, people vote with their dollars and they will continuously vote with the things that they say. Like you said, if you go to a restaurant and you don't leave full, you're going to be like, dude, the portions were small. They were, didn't fill up my water glass. I didn't feel like they appreciated me there as a customer. They kept me on a wait. They told me it'd be 20 minutes. It was actually 45 minutes. And those are the things that you'll tell somebody if you go to a dining experience and it wasn't pleasant. But they'll also do that about where they go. But the the medical system has people indoctrinated to think that they go somewhere and it's going to take them three hours to just get seen. And they don't get touched. And they That's don't get an exam. Well, people don't want, they don't go to the doctor. They don't want two things really. Well, you know, mainly they don't want bad news and they don't want to be sold on something. I mean, you know, those two things. So, you know, when it comes down to it, when you understand that um, you shouldn't be sold on your health, you should be educated on, you know, what is going on to an extent in a, in, in, in a way that it makes sense. Now, if, you're, if your patients don't understand what you're doing, why you're doing it, how it can relate, if they can't wrap their brain around what is happening, uh, then it's very difficult to climb that hill. I mean, you know, and, and you have to have a good, nice and tight story. Now, people come into my office, um, you know, with something like heavy metal toxicity as their chief complaint. You know, if I x-rayed their neck and, and did leg checks and palpated their spine and told them that, well, you know, the C2 is slightly off and, you know, blah, 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 and, and gave them, you know, the, the whole typical story when it comes down to musculoskeletal stuff, I mean, it really wouldn't resonate too well with that patient and, um, you know, the result would suffer. But if, you know, you, you, you have a way to articulate what you're doing, why you're doing it, an analysis that makes sense, um, and then how really what the expectation is, as we talked about earlier, that intention versus expectation. Expectation is very, very, very important. People walk into my office, I expect them to get well. Uh, my intentions, if you're a healer, your intentions should be, you know, pretty spot on. If you're not, you're not going to be uh, healing too many people, not for long. But if your expectation is that they're going to get well, uh, and you're going to see that through. That's 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 really where the healing begins. And again, tapping into that emotional side as well, figuring out what is going on beneath the surface. These physical issues, again, are most of the time a manifestation of something going on up here. So, you know, learning that, understanding that, and, you know, being able to perfect it in your own way, 
Uh, so it is organic when it comes out of your mouth is the key. So absolutely love it. Well, you're, you're absolutely spot on with the simplicity of it is if you just treat people how you would want to be treated, I think it's biblical. It's the golden rule of care. Like if you were to go in and adjust yourself, how would you want it? You'd that's probably right. want the way you're delivering it to people now. That's exactly right. And that's how I, you know, that's how I operate, not only in practice, but in life. You know, I want to be treated the way, you know, I treat people very well. I listen and I understand, um, you know, or at least I, I try to understand what, what they're going through or, you know, at least, you know, bring some light. But I, 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 I'm not someone that tells people what they want to hear either. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm someone that's, you know, I'm very honest, but if I don't know the answer to something, I don't make stuff up. And that is something that our profession too is, is another thing. It's not only chiropractic, but I mean, you know, there's make stuff up. If, if I don't know what's going on or I don't, you know, I'm not going to pretend like I know someone comes in and doc, I was really sore after this last treatment, you know, and well, you know, what happened? Well, I, I don't know. But what I do know is, is that after this treatment, that's not going to be the case. So, you know, what am I going to do? Get in, get in, start saying something. I've really no, I have really no idea about them. I and I could hypothesize and that's just it. You know, we see things all the time, especially this day and age online and, you know, wherever we're, we're looking to get our resources and we see something and then it resonates with us. And then we're, we, we, we process that as a fact. And then we want to, you know, say that. And then we go out and we repeat these words to people like with a fact, but you know, maybe that's not, maybe that wasn't true in the first place. Maybe, you know, there's so many different things because I feel a certain way about it. Does it mean that it's right for everybody? No, of course not. I mean, you know, and that's, that's it. Understanding people, dealing with people, getting to know people. I tell my patients, I say this, I go, you know, I get to know you. Everybody, you know, has a combination. Like, you know, when you're in high school, there's a combination lock in your locker. You know, everybody has a combination code. And you know what, when I get to know someone, start working with them a little bit and I feel what's going on, I can feel them out and understand them. You know, uh, once I get that code, then I know them. We're, we're like this. We understand what's going on. And there's nothing better than when someone comes to me and I let them know, hey, we're going to do this. This is what's going to happen. And here's the deal. I want you to live your life and I want you to do the things that you want to do. Uh, they have, you know, obviously they have to be logical, but I mean, you know, I want you to live your life and have fun and do the things you want to do with the, with knowing that, Hey, if something goes wrong or something, you know, whatever you come see me and we'll fix it and we'll get you better and I'll get you to the next level. And you don't have to worry about that, but don't use, you know, limitations or that stuff. Don't use it as an excuse not to live your life because then you're going to start down this hill, this steep hill down because, you know, Oh, I, I'm not enjoying myself as much as I'd like to, because I feel limited or I can't do this. No, do what you want. As long as it makes sense, don't jump off the roof. But I mean, you know, you want to go mountain biking, you want to go do some stuff, you have hobbies that you want to have, do them. And you know what? Do them with confidence. And worst case scenario is, is that, hey, if you get a little banged up, you're hurting, come back, we'll fix you. And you know what to expect. And that is really, you know, when you give someone a permission slip to, you know, live their life the way they want to, when they know they've got somebody to come back to that's going to be there to help them, it's a big deal. It's very soothing for them. It makes them feel great. And that's, you know, that's what I'm all about. I want them to live their life and get the most out of it. Quality of life is number one. And I just coined a new phrase off what you just said, relationship adjusting. There you go. Well, it is, it is, it is. Like I said, you get to know people. Everybody's a little bit different, right? I mean, you know, uh, you, you don't look at people. I mean, everyone's not a skeleton walking into your office. They've got emotions, they've got feelings, they've got things that are going on that, you know, brought them to you. And that's, you know, understanding that, listen, guys, when, you know, before I joined zone school, like I knew this stuff, I had an idea of this stuff, but I didn't, I wasn't good at bringing it out. And that was a big, you know, that was something that, you know, I sought, I, I wanted to be better at. I wanted to figure out how can I tap into these emotions and, 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 and you know, get into somebody at a different level, a deeper level. Um, I needed a mechanism by which to do that. And that, you know, is one of the many things this has taught me. And I can see my, my results, the healing and everything else has gone like that because I've added another, you know, element to what I'm doing. I mean, you know, you got to have a lot of tools in your box. I mean, I'm not talking physical tools, but you know, a, a good cadence of how you're looking at things, seeing things and what's going on. So many people in our profession have done so many different things that they get lost. They don't know what they're doing. I mean, they do know what they're doing, but they're, they're, they're all over the place and it's hard because they don't know what's working, what's not working. And, you know, so it's, it's, it's nice when you can be very efficient with how you're looking at things, your analysis and the way that you're able to operate, because that's really what it is. I mean, you know, everybody's a little bit different and you got to tweak that a little bit, but you, you know, some people just go off the rails and, and it's just, you know, it, it, it gets murky for people. And that's what I do try so hard not to do with my patients is, you know, we're on a straight line, even though healing isn't linear, I get it, but 
we're going to treat it like it's a straight line and we're going to get it well. We're going to, you know, we're going to do it thoroughly and quickly. So where do you see chiropractic as a profession heading in the next 20 years or so? Well, here's the thing. If you go to zonetechnique.com and check out what we've got going on there, I would say that you're going to be in a better place for doing so. Uh, chiropractors need to, you know, really understand what the impact they're having on their patients. There's the healing in the business. There's so much bad business going out out there that it really is and has put a black eye on the profession in so many ways. So, you know, I understand business very well, but I also understand if I tell somebody it's going to take them 20 visits to get the kink out of their neck or whatever for my own financial prowess that it's going to take 20 visits for that. But I'd rather tell them, I don't know how many it's going to take, you know, hopefully one or two. Uh, and then when I do that, they'll tell somebody else and then the word travels. And that's how, you know, I think we all would love to operate. But, you know, this profession, it's, it's, it's an amazing profession. Um, you know, I think that a lot of people in this profession put their um, philosophy in front of their patient's well-being or put their practice management um, you know, tutelage in, in the wrong direction of what they're wanting to do, which kind of skews, you know, how things are being done in their office. Uh, it's all about healing. And, you know, I think that their chiropractic is, is just such a, 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 a gift. And I think that as long as people don't take advantage of it, um, use it for what it's worth or use it for what they find it and, and how it works for them, you know, it's going to continue on very, very strongly, but it's one piece of a larger puzzle. Um, and you know, people need to be educated on that. So I, I, I don't, I don't like chiropractic. I don't like the business side of it whatsoever. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm, and don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm, I'm, I understand business very well. Um, but when it comes down to the way that these people or not these people, but my colleagues, a lot of them, you know, treat it, uh, and then relay that to the patient, it's tough. It, it, it doesn't resonate with them well. I, and I hear it. I hear it firsthand when they come into my office and they say, oh, this guy told me it's going to take six months to get the, you know, the numbness out of my fingers. I'm like six months and $5,000. Oh, oh, six months and $5,000. Oh, you know, okay. Well, you know, that's why you're here. And I'm going to tell you, that's not going to happen here. And boom, we do it in a couple visits. No big deal. You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. This episode is sponsored by Imaging Services, Cairo Health USA, Cairo Moguls, Chiropractic Rocks, True Weight Solutions, The 100 Year Lifestyle, Pure Cairo Notes, Titronics, Passive Practice Profits, Brain Tap Technology, Sherman College of Chiropractic, SCED, Cairo Pro Accounting, A-Line, and Midwest Brain Health Technology. Let's hustle. So who have been some of your biggest mentors or heroes on your chiropractic journey? And well, if you could pick any one person from history to have dinner with, who would it be? Well, th that's easy. Um, you know, the, the one person that I would love to sit and have dinner with that's not around anymore is Dr. Thurman Fleet. Uh, I've done, read a lot of his work and very familiar with it. It's the roots really of uh, zone technique, uh, you know, the zone, zone therapy and concept therapy. Thurman Fleet is an amazing, amazing person, amazing healer. Um, I would love to pick his brain and um, you know uh, spend spend uh, an afternoon with him absolutely no doubt but you know for me the big influences that I've had um, you know more you know more recently you know dr. Pete you know Pete Goldman's been you know really really a big one for me he's helped me in so many ways uh, learn something that I know that I was able to take my skills to the next level with uh, which has been absolutely amazing and and uh, you know he's such a phenomenal healer and inspiration to others and and, and just a just a great dude um, Larry Reuter is a guy that I've been practicing with that's been in practice since 1981 here in Atlanta. And um, he's very well known by many people because he's been around for a long, long time. Um, I love the man. Uh, we share office space together. Uh, and uh, he's taught me basically, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of things, a lot of great things. Uh, he really taught me how to adjust. Um, and he's given me a lot of great nuggets in terms of bedside manner and the way that, you know, you want to run your office. So it's, he's been he's been a phenomenal influence as well. And then, uh, you know, Dr. Tim, my, 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 you know, one of my best friends, Tim Dombowski, who I've had a practice with for 13 years now down in, uh, Buckhead. 
uh, in Atlanta, uh, you know, doing different things, learning different things. He's exposed me to a lot. And, that, you know, my journey, as we talked about earlier, you know, I mean, yeah, you, you get out of school and you get in the position, you know, I was fortunate because I had a, a buddy that was, had a successful practice. He was a friend and cares about me. I mean, he's a, a legit friend. Um, and one of my best friends to this day, he never took advantage of me. He was great to me and, uh, he paid me what he could. And I accepted that and did that. And I, and I made my own space. I built it up myself with him and created, you know, abundance out of that because we worked together. It wasn't, you know, he was looking down on me because I was graduated, you know, a few years after him or whatever. So, you know, that's, that's, you know, a big thing in the profession is, is that you can't be, you can't be scared to pivot. You know, you always want to learn new things, be exposed to new stuff how much of it you use versus how much you don't. I mean, you know, that just depends, but you know, you always got to look to find ways to do things that resonate with you, your practice, what you want to do and who you are. Cause if, if you're not genuine in this and you know, if you're scripted in what you're doing, it's probably not going to lead to the best results. So I, um, I'm not scripted at all. I don't do, you know, I don't do that. I don't subscribe to that. Um, you know, people come into my office, my patients come in and we're just about getting you better. It's just about getting the results. I don't need to sell you on me or sell you on anything else. You're there for a reason. I know why you're there. You're telling me why you're there. And you know what? I'm there to provide the answer to whatever it is that you're coming in with the question for. So that's how I look at it. But yeah, I've had some, I've been blessed to have some great influence. And of course my buddy, uh, Jason Lyles, who uh, got me into chiropractic. And that was a big, you know, big thing. If not for him, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. And I wouldn't have had the influence and impact that I've had on so many people in my life. So definitely, definitely another person that uh, I've been influenced by, but people that are in my life that are like friends of mine that I work with tangibly, those are the influences I have, you know, reading books and seeing, watching podcasts and speech. I mean, that's all great. But when you really get to know someone at their core level, what they're about, their values, how they look at things, um, you know, that's what creates you as, as, you know, uh, a healer, a chiropractor, uh, your business sense, and, and, and gives you a nice, well-rounded picture of what's going on. So everybody's a little bit different and you just got to figure out what's right for you. I love this, uh, passion that you hold. And I love the opportunity for you to shine a spotlight on your, your friends that have actually made an impact on you and people that took you under their wing and said, Hey, this is how you do it. And I, I just think that that's one of the, the parts, you know, a lot of times people are like, Oh, I want to go to dinner with uh, BJ Palmer. And I think that would be cool, but I think it's also really cool when you can find somebody like Thurman fleet. Um, that has made a profound impact on you at this part of your career. And, you know, that that person is somebody that is now making an impact on thousands of people because that training and mindset is now being delivered to a whole new group of people that are on, on, on the rise. And the zone school is full of people that are having influence from Thurman fleet. So I think that that's really cool as well as, you know, historical resonance, um, there's leaders on every winning team. And I look at chiropractic in the next 20 years as being on a winning streak. I look at the chiropractor as being the winner of the winning streak because chiropractors never been able to get toppled over even over the past, you know, 50 years of infiltration with the medical model. Um, chiropractors are still standing strong and they're still bonding stronger and even though there are some differences and some other philosophies of approach to business and adjusting, the chiropractor is not able to be bought. And that's the thing I love most about this profession is they're healers, they stand alone, and they all have a deep-rooted philosophy in what they believe in and who they've learned from and where they're going. So, I, I mean, I was all in in chiropractic 12 years ago when I first started working in an office, and I'm like, why don't more people know about this stuff? Sure. So today... Fast forward 12 years down the line, Luke and I have produced over 900 interviews on chiropractic, two films. And uh, it's just, to me, it's really inspiring to hear a chiropractor with so much stability in where they are today with what they feel is going on and who some of their influence has been and what they feel as the profession going forward as. So I appreciate you being so open and, uh, you know, open book style about where you see the indifference, but where you also see the power. And I think that we couldn't talk about 
chiropractic without talking about the confused state, <laughs> but we also talk about chiropractic with being the answer. And your position is, I just want to get people better. I want to get people results and I want them to tell 200 people about me each. <laughs> that's, that's right. And, and that, you know, Jim, that's well said. And I just want to say one more thing, uh, you know, on, on that, on that topic of Thurman fleet and, and, and concept therapy and all that, um, when it comes down to it, it's like this, it's very simple. Uh, I'd never heard of Thurman fleet until I met, uh, Pete Goldman. And, you know, the reality of it is, is, is that I have talked to a lot of chiropractors and I know a lot of chiropractors and, um, they hadn't heard of them either. So, you know, we look at what Pete is doing here and it's not like he's taken concept therapy and, you know, whatever I'd say maybe, you know, he's modernized it, made it his own and, and had a lot of other influence to, you know, do what he's doing. But I mean, Jim, you've been to Pete's office. I've been to his office. I know what goes on there. And the reality of it is like this, if everybody, you know, in this profession looked at things from that perspective um, of healing and, and, and way, not to say that it would be for everybody, but, you know, everybody can conduct themselves as they want. But, you know, no one would have really understood. And, and I say no one loosely, because I'm sure there are a couple people, I don't want to insult anybody, but, you know, as a rule, I would say uh, most people had never heard of Thurman Fleet. They never heard of zone therapy and the work that Pete is doing to uh, bring that back to the full, put his own spin on it is uh, it's helping a ton of people, not only, not only Kairos that are practicing and looking for a better way of doing things, more efficient way, more consistent results and all that other stuff that goes along with it. But the patients, and that's what this is about, is getting people well. And, you know, again, D.D. Palmer did things differently. You know, we look at chiropractic. Nobody can define chiropractic but him. And, um, you know, we've really in 2021 now gotten pretty far away from that original game plan that he put together. And this work, at, you know, the, this work with zone technique is the closest thing that I see or have ever found that even comes close to that. And um, it's, it's a blast. It's a lot of fun. It just, it simplifies things. And that's what I love. I love when someone comes into my office with whatever it may be and it doesn't, you know, it there's a full confidence. You come into my office with Lyme disease, you come into my office with a stiff neck. I'm not going to look at you any different. Um, you know, I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of that work. And, uh, I love that. I think it's great. And I, and I really want and think that, you know, most chiropractors, and again, you have your own style. Everybody does things their own way, but that's the stuff that makes this what it is. That's what makes it fun when you can do stuff that not, you know, nobody thought you could do, or maybe didn't associate you with, but the jokes on them, because that is what real chiropractic is. Amen, brother. <laughs> so what would be some advice that you would give to uh, some chiropractic students who say might be graduating soon and they just need some advice? Sure, sure. Well, number one would be to go to zonetechnique.com and check out the website that we put together, check out what we're doing and get in early and start learning this stuff from a different level. Uh, I would tell you, I wish I, and not only me talking, but I've talked with hundreds of other folks in the zone school that agree and say the same thing and how you use it, how you put it into practice, into perspective for yourself. That's up to you. I mean, you know, then that's just it. Not, nothing scripted. You learn material, immerse yourself in material and just want to become a very, very well-rounded healer. You know, um, I would also say, don't put pressure on yourself, low overhead. When it comes down to being successful in this business, a lot of people talk about numbers. A lot of people talk about, you know, how much they collect if each year and blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, no one's really talking about how much they're spending. So if you've, you know, a million dollar practice, that's great. But if your overhead is, you know, 925,000, well, okay. I mean, you know, or, or, or whatever the case may be. So the lower your overhead, the more you can do on your own and the more that you can learn from other people that have been there before that want to bring you on uh, as a like-minded person, maybe as an associate, as you get started, but, you know, just beware. There are a lot of guys out there that use and abuse these young guys or not even young, but these guys that are just getting out of school. And I hate that. It's, 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 it's terrible. Uh, you know, you want to, you want to bring people up, help them be better. Uh, so, you know, you want to find someone that you resonate with, you want to bring something to the table and you want to have a leg up on what else is, what everybody's got going on. Um, you know, and again, 
for me personally, I mean, the zone technique is, uh, is fantastic because it's reproducible. And, and when you work in a big practice and you've got other people, you know, you want to have a, an analysis that everybody can do and that they can understand. And that makes sense. Finding subluxation or hitting the high spots. I mean, you know, that doesn't make much sense to me personally. So, you know, find your way, find your niche, but, um, you know, definitely take the time and realize that, you know, having a good amount of tools in your box to, you know, be well-versed and let that experience roll and don't, don't sign contracts or get yourself into things that you don't know what the future is going to hold for you. Just, you know, do your, do your best to live every day. Uh, don't take the passion out of what you're doing and remember why you went to school. Now, if you went to chiropractic school because you thought you were going to get rich and earn a lot of money being a chiropractor. Well, you know, I don't know, maybe you're right, but most of us would say, no, it's, you know, not the way that really is. If you got to go to chiropractic school, you want to learn, you want to be helping people. You want to be involved in their life. You want to, you know, live by example, do these things. And you know what, you do that and, and you'll find your way, but it takes a while and don't get frustrated because things take time. You know, anybody that's do done anything for any period of time, they didn't just walk off, you know, get their degree, start doing something and we're, you know, just absolutely killing it. I mean, you know, there's definitely exceptions. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, it's a craft, it's an art. Chiropractic is an art and, and, and understanding what is going on, understanding relationships, understanding people and how you can help them. And then having the respect, you know, for them then, and, and understanding how they look at you and respecting yourself. And that is really what is so important as well. You've got to respect yourself and you got to have, you know, integrity in what you're doing and treat people the way you want to be treated. I think that's what's made me successful in understanding things uh, because, I, you know, why would I want to deal with somebody in terms of my health that I didn't look at and say, oh, wow, I want to, you know, emulate what this guy's doing or this gal is doing because they're obviously doing something right. And when we were off camera, um, just getting acquainted with each other before this interview, we were discussing uh, chiropractors eating their own cooking. And uh, the chiropractor is a lifestyle um, doctor. And you guys are a lifestyle. You live the lifestyle. Like you're saying, you adjusted your two kids um, early on when they were born. And you go in and you want to get adjusted the way you would treat somebody else. And I think that that's really important to understand. And back to the conversation of the chiropractic student, I think it's more valuable for a chiropractor student to get um, mentors before they ever become an associate. And I think that understanding mentorship and understanding relationship capital within understanding, you know, not only technique, but seeing a lot of different offices run. In deciding who you're going to pick to be somebody that could be a good mentor for you. I think that that's a huge process. And I think a lot of times people put so much bearance on just going in and learn how to get through school, pass boards, and they don't build those long-standing relationships with a good mentor uh, for long term. And I, I, I think that that would be my best advice to a chiropractic student is develop those mentor relationships. Um, eat your own cooking. Yeah. And just, just like you said earlier about the mechanic deal, like yeah. you, you know, a guy's a mechanic, right? Cause you can see the black on their hands and from turning wrenches and you, you know, the guy that, you know, is the best chef in town because they embody the chef and everybody knows them as chef. Um, but you know, the guy that works at Denny's or at village Inn, um, they're just a cook. And I think that, that when you find somebody that's a really, really passionate chiropractor, Everybody in the city knows them as the chiropractor. I know. And that's great. I mean, listen, I agree 100%. Uh, unfortunately, you know, um, mentors don't grow on trees, especially in this profession. So, you know, you have to look, you have to find, you have to, you know, investigate, find areas under this umbrella that you resonate with. And that's something for me that, you know, before I joined Zone School, I was always very ho-hum about, you know, the chiropractic profession and other chiropractors. But when you start dealing with people that are like-minded, and I'm not just saying Zone School, but I'm saying anything that, you know, you join, that you get into, that you can find some like-minded people with if healing is, you know, really what you want to do and getting results, then within those groups, you, you know, you see and you find good people, you sniff them out. And then, yeah, you do that. I mean, I, 
I do that now. I mean, you know, people join Zone School if they're here locally or whatever. They're like, hey, doc, I want to stop by your office. Or I want to come in and, you know, understand what you're doing, how you're doing it so I can be better. And I love that. I mean, I love helping grooming guys and not even young guys. Guys have been practicing for 30 some odd years but want to see a better way or, or a different way of doing things or how I do them. And, um, you know, those are the things that, you know, you, you just do because you love the profession and you want to make sure that whoever it is you're helping, that even if there's no like tangible results, it doesn't matter. You know that they're going to help them help other people. And that's just it. I, I, that's, that's the way that I look at it. I, I want to help my patients. I love helping other docs. I love, you know, love this profession and, you know, but I'm also very realistic and I understand how things, you know, need to be done and need to be addressed. We have to, you know, obviously be logical, lawful, broad, positive with how we handle our patients, what's going on, how we handle other people. But yeah, absolutely. Great mentors. We need more of them in this profession. And that's called sharing the secret. That's it. That's it. It's working together, man. And and having your doors open and, you know, doing everything you can to, you know, be the best and emulate what you want. And again, you know, your soul is a reflection of yourself. So, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you see yourself, your motivation to get up and go. That was, those are the things that we want to look at. That's what, that's what's important. So, uh, that's what I do. I'm a very motivated man because, uh, you know, I, I, I help a lot of people and, uh, you know, I take it seriously. I'm a fun guy. I like to have a great time, but I mean, at the end of the day, when it comes to healing, you know, they're there for a reason. And it's, that's my, that's my job. That's my calling. And that's what happens. So what kind of things do you like to read and listen to? And what are some of your hobbies? How do you, well, how do you have fun? That's, that's a great, that's a great question. Well, um, I liked, you know, uh, I love reading um, certain things. I'm not a huge reader, but I do. I, 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 uh, the Rays of the Dawn is a book that Thurman Fleet wrote, which is an amazing, an amazing, amazing book that I've read several times. It's fantastic. I love uh, reading Koichi Tohei. Uh, you know, I really got exposed to a lot of different things that not necessarily are you know chiropractically driven, but more lifestyle driven. Um, you know, and I take nuggets from that stuff, uh, and, and apply it to my life in the way that I'm operating. And if I see somebody that is lacking something specific that I know that, you know, I can give them that nugget or pass that on to them for, you know, whatever, whatever it may be that, you know, it helps enrich their life and helps, helps that help, you know, help each other. So, I mean, yeah, I, I, uh, those kind of books I love, um, and I've gotten into them a lot more, you know, here in the last couple of years. Uh, I do, you know, for fun, um, you know, I've got two young girls. I, I, I believe in a very balanced lifestyle. Um, I love the outdoors as Jim, you and I were, we're talking about our, our, our trucks and, 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 and having fun. You know, I like going up to the mountains and doing that. I love camping. Um, and I actually, you know what, I, I enjoy uh, manual labor to some extent. I uh, grew up doing a lot of that stuff. Uh, I was in charge of, as we were talking about earlier, uh, you know, shoveling the driveway, even though I don't live, uh, up North anymore, would, wouldn't for that, but you know, yard work, just doing things with my hands, uh, having a creative vision. I love being able to, uh, work in, work at my home, work in my yard and be able to see that because, you know, the reality is this is, is that being a, be, doing what I do every day, you know, I'm helping others and I don't, you know, I don't look at that and like, Oh, like who I helped today. I mean, you know, when I'm sitting on a beach, you know, uh, uh when I'm, you know, retired or partially retired or, or whatever the case may be. And I have an opportunity to look at my life's work. That's what I'm going to do. But I mean, I love uh, messing around in the yard because when I come home, I can sit on my porch, uh, have a glass of wine and, and, and say, look what I did today or look what I, look what's going on. And that's, that's kind of stuff that brings me joy. Uh, I'm a very active father. Uh, I'm, I'm also too uh, a very active husband in my wife's life and our family's life. So I believe all that's important. I waited a while to have a family. Um, you know, I got, I got, you know, had a, had a great time throughout my, my twenties and, um, you know, my, my early thirties. And now I've, you know, really settled down and, uh, you know, put it to it with my work, my home, my family, everybody else. So those are the things I like to do and they keep me balanced. I'm, I'm a big proponent of work-life balance. You know, I think that it's, it's extremely important and also to creativity, you know, so many people lack, they don't lack creativity, but they lack the expression of creativity. And whether it is using your hands, whether it's painting, whether it's, you know, doing yard work, whether it's trimming trees, whatever the case may be, anything that's creative, you know, I love to tell people, get out and do that. Take a walk, you know, do, do some fun stuff, listen to audiobooks, whatever stuff you like, because that's the stuff that keeps you moving, keeps you motivated and passionate. So all that. Well, just like our original conversation before we hit the record button. I was telling you, I was like, dude, I'm so inspired. 
I'm reading stuff. I was sharing with you like new rollout for like questions yeah. that we're going to be doing. And that's the thing is the person that produces consistently, they always refine. They always figure out how to make the situation um, better. And a lot of times when people come into something after two and a half years of doing something, they're like, well, I don't, or three years of doing something, they're like, well, I gotten better. And that's true. If you're doing something for longevity and you don't figure out how to become better at it, being a better dad, being a better husband, being a better uh, practitioner, living life with no regrets type mindset, being like you said, your, your soul is a reflection of yourself. Like that type of mindset, that's living life with no regrets. And that means that you wake up and you're ready to be inspired, not only to be a better version of yourself, but you're learning. And the zone technique sounds like something that's been a great addition into your practice style. It sounds like you're maturing a whole lot with uh, more certainty in the way that you're using the tools that you've been, uh, you know, forging forward with over the past uh, 13 years. And it sounds like you're having a lot of fun. And uh, I think you've been one of uh, my favorite interviews. Um, like I said, Luke and I have done uh, 261 of these Cairo Hustle podcasts that have actually become episodes. But over the past three years and four months, we've done 900 interviews. So getting to know you, interviewing you, finding out what uh, makes you chiropractic um, <laughs> is a lot of fun for us. So I appreciate you being our guest today. Well, it was an honor to be here, guys. And I'll tell you what, you know, like we discussed, I'd be, I'm looking forward to coming back when you bring back the new questions that we talked about and we can get on air and you'll have more and different stuff to talk about. And we'll have, you know, different avenues to go down. So no, it was, you guys are doing great stuff for this community. There's no doubt. I've been a big fan of your show for, you know, quite some time now. And I love hearing and, and seeing, you know, different people's perspective on what they're doing and how they're doing it. Um, and, and I think it's great. I think the more exposure that everyone has, the better this whole community or this chiropractic umbrella that we're all under is. And, you know, we'll move forward with. So it's exciting stuff. You guys are awesome. I appreciate it. I, you know, like I said, I'll, I'll definitely love to come back and uh, we'll go over the new questions that uh, we talked about off air. It'll be good stuff. Well, thank you for being our guest today, Dr. Nathan. And before we all jump off, what, uh, what are some websites that people can visit if they want to learn more about you? Um, well, you can, uh, well, first of all, I would say go to zonetechnique.com, which is, I've said that a few times, not to be redundant, which is a great website. It's about what I do and how I do it. Uh, my, uh, N Brown, my name is, uh, Brown with an E and Brown DC is my personal page, which is really cool. Um, I have, a, we do some vitamin stuff. I have a vitamin company called six systems vitamins, which kind of, you know, really pairs with, uh, the zone technique. That's more stuff that I've got going on. And, yeah. I mean, other than that, I mean, you know, I, I love sports and I love doing all, you know, other stuff as well. So there's, you know, all the good stuff, but uh, no, make no mistake, the zone stuff, my personal page, all the other stuff that I have funds with and healing, that's where it's at. And that's, you know, where I love to go. Well, thank you for being our guest today. It was a real pleasure to uh, break digital bread with you. Yep. And yep. To have you as our guest. So we want you to enjoy the rest of your afternoon and uh, keep healing. Appreciate you guys. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time. Talk soon. You got it. Thanks for listening to Cairo Hustle. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.